it's Miss Christina. We have made it to our final day of our Easter series. Y'all, I have loved these resurrection eggs. I've had so much fun opening the Bible, reading all of these stories of Easter, and matching the stories with these eggs and the little something-something hidden inside that will help us to remember our whole entire story. I've loved it. I hope you've had some fun too. So we've gone through 10 of our resurrection eggs. That means that we have two left to go through today. Two stories, two eggs. So before we jump in, I think that we need to have a little review quiz. So I am going to ask some questions or say a sentence and have you fill in the blank as a way to review everything. So follow along with me, see how many of these questions of these fill in the blank things that you can guess as we review all 10 of the eggs that we've already looked at. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on a, what kind of animal? a donkey and people laid out palm branches and cloth on the road in order to honor him as he entered Jerusalem, all right? Then we read a story about one of his disciples who was gonna betray him. What was his name? Judas, yeah. And so Judas was paid how much? 30 silver coins to betray Jesus. And so in our egg, what did we find? We found three of those silver coins. Good job. Next, we read a story about Jesus having what meal with his disciples? Dinner. We all love dinner. And Jesus talked about some sort of food that would be broken and would represent his body. What kind of food was that? We talked about the bread. And then he there was some sort of liquid that he said would represent the blood. What kind of liquid was that? It was wine. And so in our egg, to remember that story, we found a cup. We found the cup that would hold the wine, All right? Next up, we read a story about Jesus taking his disciples to a special garden. Who can remember the name of that garden? It's kind of a big word. Who can say it? The Garden of Gethsemane. All right. And so what did Jesus do in that garden? He went and prayed. He went and spent time with God. And so in our egg, what did we find? Two feet? No. Did we find two eyeballs? No. Did we find two ears? No. What did we find? We found two hands. These hands represent praying hands. Jesus spent that time with God before he was going to be crucified on the cross. And he spent time praying and talking to God. All right. Next, Jesus was arrested in the garden and he was taken away. And um, the soldiers hurt Jesus, didn't they? What did they use to hurt Jesus to hit him with? Now, this is what we found in our egg. It was the whip. They took this whip and they hurt Jesus. All right. While Jesus was having dinner with his disciples, he told them that one of them would do what? Would they tell a secret? No. Would they do something really nice? No. What would they do? He told them that one of them would betray him. And so he said that before a certain type of animal, what type of animal are we talking about? The rooster. He said before the rooster crowed, how many times? two times, before the rooster crowed two times, that one of his disciples would deny him how many times? Three times. Now, who can tell me what disciple denied him? It was Peter. Peter denied him three times before the rooster crowed twice. Good job. Are you keeping up? How's this going? Is this helping you all of these items? Is this helping you to remember? Are you doing a good job? Are you, are you coming up with all these answers? This is so exciting. Okay, let's see what's next. So the soldiers um, who had Jesus, remember he was arrested. How were they treating him? Were they being really nice to him? No. Were they being really mean to him? Yeah. And they were mocking him. Specifically, they were mocking him. They were making fun of him. 
And so they made something and put it on Jesus's head. Do you remember what that something was? It was a crown of thorns. Yeah. And so here's our item from that egg, a crown of thorns. When they put this on Jesus's head, um, how did that make him feel? It hurt him. The thorns stuck into his head and they made him bleed. Yeah. All right. So then we read the story of Jesus being nailed to the what? The cross. And so in our next egg, we had a cross. And what are what is this cross made out of? Three nails. And so two of those nails went where? Into Jesus's hands. And one of those nails went where? Into Jesus's feet. And so this one symbolizes two things. The shape of it is the cross, but then what it's made out of is the three nails that held Jesus to the cross. So this one has kind of, it kind of has double meaning, huh? All right, we have two left for our review. Two left. Um, next, in our story, we learn that Jesus died. And so when the soldiers came to check on the men, how many men, so Jesus was on the cross in the middle. How many men were also crucified with Jesus? There were two other men. Jesus was on the cross in the middle, and there were two men on either side of him. And so when the soldiers came to check on them, they found that Jesus had already died. But to make sure that Jesus had died, what did one of the soldiers do? They stabbed him in the side with a spear, and Jesus was dead, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. All right, last one. Jesus was dead, and so what were they going to do with his body? There was a man that was very brave, and he asked if he could have Jesus' body to bury him. Do you remember what that man's name was? It was Joseph. And so Joseph took really good care of Jesus. What did he do with Jesus' body? He wrapped Jesus' body in something. Do you remember what that was? It was some linen cloth, and that's the item that was hidden in our egg. He took such good care of Jesus, wrapped him up in that linen cloth, and then what did he do with Jesus' body? Did he bury it in the ground? No, he carved a tomb out of the rock. It kind of looked like a cave, and he put Jesus' body in the tomb. Whew! How'd you do? That was hard for me to even do, to keep going and remember all of those questions and show you all of these items. Like, y'all, we rocked that. Good job. So, Let's dig in. Let's look at our last two eggs. We finally reached our last two resurrection eggs. Let's start with the pink one. Open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. All right, friends, we know that Jesus has died, and our story today takes place three days after his death. Everybody say Matthew chapter 28. Verse 1 through 4. All right, let's see what it says. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. There was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. They completely froze. They were so scared. Everybody show me your most scared face. Ready? <gasps> the stone that was rolled in front of Jesus' tomb was huge and heavy. It was as big as a door and probably weighed more than a car. But it only took one of God's angels to roll that stone away. There were special soldiers who were positioned outside of Jesus' tomb to keep watch to make sure that nothing happened. And when they saw the angel come from heaven, and when they saw that angel roll away the stone, they were stunned. They were shocked. They couldn't even believe what had just happened. If you had to guess, what would you think would be in this pink egg that would remind us of this story? I think some of you have already guessed it. Let's look inside. Inside of this egg is a stone. Now, like I said, the stone in the story was huge and it was heavy. I think it was much bigger than this stone. And this stone isn't that heavy, but the stone in front of Jesus' tomb was huge. But that angel rolled that stone right away. 
All right, friends, we did it. We made it to our very last resurrection egg. I can't even believe it. We have one story left, one egg left to open. Let's see what happens. You guys are already in the right chapter of your Bible. So everybody say Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 through 10. Let's read it together. It says, the angel told the women, do not be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples he has risen from the dead. And indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you. So departing quickly from the tomb, with fear and great joy, they ran to tell his disciples the news. Just then, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! They came up, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus told them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Oh my goodness, you guys, Jesus came back to life. He died up on that cross, but you guys, the story tells us that he came back to life. When the two women came to the tomb of Jesus, they were completely surprised. Everybody show me your best surprise face. Good job. The heavy stone was rolled aside and the tomb was empty. Guys, Jesus' body was not there. It was not in the place that they had seen it be buried. This was the promise that Jesus made to his disciples at the dinner they had had just a few days before. Remember that Jesus said that his body would be broken just like the bread? His body would be broken just like the wine in the cup. His blood would be poured out, but he promised that he would come back to life. And so remember, the disciples didn't know what, was, what that meant or what was going to happen as they were having dinner and as Jesus was telling that. But when they saw Jesus on the cross, when they saw his body broken, when they saw his blood poured out, it started to make sense to them. And then when they find out that Jesus is still alive, they realize that Jesus kept his promise. And so as the women ran away, who did they run into? They ran into Jesus, Jesus who was resurrected, who had come back to life. Do you know anybody that has come back from the dead? Um, no, only Jesus has the power to do that. And he did just as he said he did, he would. And I am so excited to see how this story ends. My heart was so sad knowing how Jesus died on the cross and how much pain he was in. But my heart now is filled with so much joy to know that Jesus has risen. And also, I'm just so thankful to know that Jesus loves me so much that he was willing to go through all of this to die on the cross for me and for my sins. And guess what? He died on the cross for you and your sins too. So guys, we have one egg left. Let's see what's inside. We've got the white egg. If you had to guess what was inside this egg to remind us of this story, what do you think it would be? Let me shake it. I can't hear anything. Hmm. Let's look inside. Let's see what's in here. Guys, the egg is empty. Is something missing? Why is this egg empty? This egg is empty because guys, when the stone was rolled away, what was the tomb? The tomb was empty. We have read 12 stories in the Bible that tell us the Easter story and tell us of the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Through these stories, we've learned just how much Jesus loves us and that he died, that he took our place on the cross, and he did that so that our sin could be forgiven. Friends, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus yet, he is inviting you to start that relationship with him right now. The Bible tells us we can pray anytime, anywhere, and about anything. And so if you're ready to pray that prayer to start your relationship with Jesus, you can do that right now. In order to do that, you pray to Jesus and you say, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose three days later and that you truly are the Son of God. Thank Jesus that he died in that cross for you and confess your sin to him. 
Tell him all of the things that you've done wrong, the mistakes that you've made, and tell him how you feel about it, that you're sorry that you've done those things. And then ask Jesus to have a relationship with you. Jesus loves you so much, so much that he would die on the cross for you. And he is just waiting so excited to have a relationship with you. Another option is that you can go and talk to mom and dad and mom and dad can help you to pray this prayer. They can pray with you and help you to take the steps to start your relationship with Jesus. Friends, if you already have a relationship with Jesus, this is an amazing time to just stop and celebrate. Every year we come to the Easter holiday, the Easter time of year, and we reread the stories of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We remember the time that we first heard the gospel. We remember the special moment when we decided that we believe in Jesus, that we want to have faith in him, have a relationship with him. And we get to remember the prayer that we prayed to for Jesus to forgive us of our sin. And so guys, take this moment to just thank God for all that he's done. Thank him for the relationship that you get to have with him and just thank him and praise him that Jesus has risen from the dead. So guys, I've had so much fun this week as we've looked at our resurrection X, as we've read all of these Bible stories. And before we go, I just want to pray with you. So I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads and clap on three. Ready? One, two, three. God, I just thank you for each and every person who has watched these videos, each and every person that um, has just been here to go through these resurrection eggs, to read these Bible stories with me. God, I've had so much fun this week, and I pray that they have too. God, thank you for the good news of your son, Jesus. Thank you that you were willing to send him to die a painful death on the cross, and God, that you have the power to raise him back to life three days later. God, the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is incredible. God, only you could do these things. And we're just so thankful that Jesus was willing to lay down his life for us. God, I thank you for each and every child, each and every family who is represented here. God, thank you for Easter. Thank you for um, technology so that we could celebrate Easter together, that we could read these stories together. God, during this time of the year, we just want to thank you and we want to praise you for all the things that you've done and for how good and powerful you are. God, we love you so much. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. And thank you for your great love that you have for us. In your precious name we pray. Amen.